<laughs> to welcome to Riverside for the California 100 late mile sportsman race. Green flag, green flag, green, green, green. Guys, this race actually did not even go to plan because we barely even made five laps, actually four laps, I think it was. As you see, we are in the. What car am I in? I think. I honestly forgot what car I'm in. As you see me, good start. I mean, we were passing people. I decided just to take the little shortcut there just because it is paved. I mean, like, might as well. I get around, I believe, the bomb Bobby Johns. Uh, 18 laps like we did the last season, I believe it was, when we did this race. Yeah, Jim Pascal there in the 04 got a little leaning on him there. Clear. So we're trying to get by a three wide and a little bit of a tight area to do it in. Keep to the right. Keep to the right. And you get by the 47 and the 5 of Donnie Allison. Remember, these cars aren't completely correct because. Clear. Because the late ball sportsman races were pretty much not guaranteed to be the same fuel like an S the Cup Series were. Yeah, actually, it was just a mix of whoever was even there and a couple of sportsmen guys. Because there was, like, at least five sportsmen races per day. And you see here, the 3, the 10, the 38, I believe that was, and the 87 all get tangled up, almost wreck. And then we dive it up on the 10 car there pretty hard. We were spinning around, too. The 87 of Curtis Turner, but at this point, I don't think that car would have ran. I think that car would have been retired at this point. No, tight there, as you see there. We get by, and the top pin's a little short just because of me using a serious point setup. And now we get by Curtis Scherner. And this is a Jim Cook, I believe. By the 38, and then this is what I mean. What happened? We are, as you see me. The only reason why that happened was I believe we went in there just too hot, and by the time I got in the second or first gear, I, it started kind of sliding around, and then I whipped it back to the right, trying to keep it straight. Because sometimes quickly whipping the wheel is better than just slowly wheeling it. And I slammed right into the wall, and we're done for the race. <clears throat> No, I did not do that, or I didn't mean it to happen like that, because it did look eerily similar to Joe Weatherly's crash. Good thing, though, is, um, at this point, window nets would have been mandatory, so I would have had a, man a window net if this mod would have okay that, or could have. But as you see there, Hershey McGriff, J John Sears, who uh, were first and second on that lap, and then the 32... And the 64 of Elmo Langley, who are the actual leaders as they passed them. And then you see the 67 and the 82 battling for a position. As you see these guys too, you see the, uh, Paul Goldsmith and the 9. And then you got the last lap here as uh, Elmo Langley was able to get around the 32 car of, um, well, who was it? I completely forgot some, for some reason I completely forgot the name of the 32 car. But then you got a lot of lap cars in front of him, so if Elmo Langley gets held up, there is a chance that the 32 car can catch to him. Or catch up to him and uh, pass him. Which hopefully in this corner I'm able to see the nameplate of the 32 car so I can figure out and remember who it was. Oh yeah, that's right, it's Bill Wembley. That's right. And the 64 gets around the 38 perfectly fine. The 32 goes around on the right side as well. Yeah, I think as long as Elmo Langley is able to pass this 02 car, he should be there for the win. Herschel McGriff looks like he's gonna get an eighth, who actually would have been in part of this race. I think he would have been the number four car instead, but 
As I said before, not everything is going to be correct, and I don't really care. As Emil Langley comes off for turn 9, Emil Langley will win the California 100 after uh, our lap 4 or 5 wreck on uh, in turn 3, or turn 6. And you see the rest of the field. Now for this reading, uh, we will see you guys.